Well, hey there, American Farmsteaders. This is Jenny with the Gramstead Family Farm. And Donna with Hazel Bell Farm. And we are coming to y'all from Northeast Florida as two farmsteaders doing our best to grow our own food and share our homesteading experiences with you in hopes that you would grow a little bit of food of your own. Yep. And this week we're talking about growing pigs. Growing out some pigs. Because who doesn't love bacon? Bacon. Sausage. Sausage dogs. I mean. Pork chops. You can't go wrong. I was grocery shopping last week, and I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Uh, our grocery shopping is like a toddler was turned loose with a credit card. Absolutely. Because it's it's mm-hmm. it's a crap run is what it is. Right. It's <laughs> it's the junk food that we can't grow. Right. And the cereal that we can't make that yeah. our teenage boys love to eat. I always feel judged by my grocery buggy in the checkout line. <laughs> and I, I always want to say, like, we grow our own food. I know. <laughs> We have we have vegetables at home. I promise. I promise. We eat salad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and meat. It looks really bad, um, but the plus side of that is we don't have to go very frequently, right? Because we don't need junk, you know. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, I happened to look through the meat aisle, yeah. last week and pork chops at this one small grocery store. Um, the price. I think they were like ten dollars a pound. Yeah, and they were boneless, which I don't appreciate. I like the flavor like the bone. that a bone in brings. Yeah, and I want the bone for scraps for stock and whatever. Yeah, um, and they were so thin. Yeah, I mean they were thin. They were pasty white. They did not look appealing at all. They didn't like look anything like homegrown pork. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. No. Homegrown pork is amazing. No. Your pork chops should look red. They should be pink. It should be a, a red meat. They yeah. should be marbled. It, 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 this, that was nothing like what I saw. Yeah. I can't believe it. Although I will say that we have raised out a couple of commercial breed pigs where the pork chops definitely are the white meat pork chops. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't necessarily think that they all come marbled. Right. But. You know, the sections of those commercial pigs, you know, like the Boston butt section and mm-hmm. those type of cuts, those are still really well marbled. Mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, there's definitely different kind of pork, yeah, different so, kind of pigs. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can do uh, commercial pig breeds kind of as a category and then lard pigs as a category. Right. Right. And then there's kind of some in between even. I there's, think so too. You know, like you get your Berkshires where you can get a good red meat, but you also get some good fat. Yeah. I th- almost kind of think that maybe your old spots fall into that category. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of middle of the road. Those more, they're heritage kind of breeds, but they're not lard pigs. Right. So let's talk about what's a lard pig. Yeah. So lard pigs, those are typically going to be, I think there's probably only a handful that I will name off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, your Cooney Coonies, mm-hmm. uh, your Mangalistas, mm-hmm. Idaho Pasture Pigs, yeah. American Guinea Hogs, and Mishans. Yeah. Do you have any to add to that list? Yeah. I would say um, your, your uh, people aren't going to want to hear this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but those <laughs> Hot belly type pigs uh-huh. are going to be your lard pigs. Yeah. Yeah, that guinea hog looks like a, a pot belly. They really do. <clears throat> so, yeah, they have they have that big, large belly. Um, they all kind of have um, an Asian look about, you know, and they do come from that region of the world. So yeah. So they have that look about their faces. They have some different hair coats, but they're smaller pigs. Yeah, generally smaller body size, mm-hmm. lighter weight. They're not getting up to... Five and six hundred pounds. No, like a commercial pig can and more. Right, <laughs> big mama, big mama. <laughs> but um, yeah, so they're smaller. Uh, they have bigger bellies. They, um, I mean, that's just at first glance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what makes them lard pigs is that, proportionately speaking, fat to meat. Yeah, you get a lot more fat off of the pig. Yeah. Yeah, versus a commercial breed. Mm -hmm. So the ratio of fat to meat is going to be a higher fat ratio Mm -hmm. on those lard pigs versus the fat to meat ratio on a commercial breed. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're talking about pounds per meat compared to fat, Mm -hmm. you're going to get a lot more fat on your lard pigs, which is why I think a lot of homesteaders really like them Mm because I really feel like... 
They're more of a dual purpose animal. Right. You know, where you can use it as your healthy fat source and a meat source. Right. So, yeah. And a lot of homesteaders that are growing them for that, for the fat source, that's their primary fat. They're, they're using lard. Right. Instead of, you know, having to buy out butter if they don't right. have a dairy source. Exactly. Or, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So... Another reason these pigs would be good are if you are looking at uh, things like prosciutto, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or um, what's something else? Hmm. Well, I can (laughs) say this. You're probably not going to pull as much bacon off of a lard pig versus a commercial breed pig. Um, you know, it, you can get some bacon, but since they're a lard pig, you can probably expect for more fat to be in that bacon mm-hmm. and you're not going to get quite the quantity of bacon because mm-hmm. of the size of the pig. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the same goes for all the other cuts on that pig. Like they're, it's a smaller it's, pig. It, you're going to get the same cuts. Like right. you'll get some chops, but they're very, very small, very small pork chops. Yeah. Right. You, but mm-hmm. with that having been said, mm-hmm. It is excellent meat. Yeah, those American guinea hogs that we butchered, mm-hmm. uh, and that okay, that's another reason. Okay, butcherability. Um, you know, you can if three women <laughs> can butcher. How many pigs did I was we do just that just day? Wondering that. I think we did four pigs that day. Four pigs that day. Uh, you, myself, and another friend of ours, Emily, who we've had on the show. She did our goat episode. Um, the three of us. I mean, how many yeah. pigs was, was it? We did. Two for sure, and then started a third, or did we do three? I don't remember. I think it was maybe so long maybe ago. you had to take off because we had enough that all of us got a pig. I feel like we did yeah. four pigs that day. We did a lot of pigs, and so and you it know, was like in six hours. And we had never butchered anything by ourselves before. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, and it was like, no, this is doable. This pig is a small enough size to mm-hmm. where we can handle this without our husbands. Yeah, and here's the thing, like we didn't scald, we we just skinned them. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Right. We could have done that. Yeah. It would have taken longer. Yeah. Um, but we didn't go that route. But yeah. still even still, we had lots of meat. You know, we even lost some of that meat in the bottom of a deep freeze, a chest freezer. Mm-hmm. And I recently found it in the it's such it was still good. It's such a difference in um that color, the color of the meat is so yeah. red. And then, yes, the fat. There's so much fat. Um, I love it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people actually refer to lard pigs, uh, cuny cunies in particular, as being, being the Kobe beef of pork. It is tender. Yep. Mm-hmm. And tender juicy. and juicy and well marbled. Um, but you're just not getting a ton of it, you know? So those homesteads that maybe have like really big families where you're feeding a ton of kids, um, you know, that larger breed meat pig might be a better option for that homestead Mm -hmm. um, just because you're getting a really high quantity Mm -hmm. of pork out of those pigs or... Or both. You know, or you could, right, some homesteads will do both Mm -hmm. um, because... You know, you have to consider what's going to benefit your homestead. It's always good to have a dual-purpose animal, but Mm -hmm. I even feel like those larger commercial breed pigs can be dual-purpose animals as well because what if you need an area tilled Mm -hmm. up? What if you're going to start a new garden in an area? Right. Well, you could throw one of those large commercial breed pigs on that area and let that pig go through there and root up that whole entire area. And they they root down pretty dang deep, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and they're kind of fertilizing it along the way as they go. So... You know, I think that commercial breed pigs can also be used as dual purpose. I think they certainly have their place. They're a faster grow out. They're a much faster grow yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you can feed them in such a way that the meat is still far superior to what you're buying at the grocery store. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I I think there's definitely a place for both. I I like a combination of them. Yeah. They and and they each have their own single purposes, but a dual purpose. And I, I mean, I look at that when you say a dual purpose is good, but you know, so are these others. I look at it like cows. Yeah. I mean, it's no secret that I love my milk cows for milk. I could butcher them if I wanted. You could yeah. call it a a dual purpose, you know, breed. Yeah. Um. But at the end of the day, they excel at the milk. 
and right. my beef cows excel at the beef. Right. Right. I could drink the milk off of my beef cows also. You absolutely could. <laughs> right. You're just not going to get the quantity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So they do, I mean, you, you could use either for both. Yeah. But I think so too. Um, I think the biggest difference between your commercial pigs and your lard pigs are your size mm-hmm. and how they can be kept. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping pigs. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that. Keeping pigs, yes. We have kept a lot of large pigs on our farm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really ever think that we've kept any kind of pig that I would consider a small breed pig. <laughs> we haven't kept anything to where it got in, too too large for us to handle. I think a 300 pounds is probably the most that we've kept. Yeah. Our old spots, when we had those, those pigs did not get huge, mm-hmm. but they're more of like that heritage breed that right. you were talking about, kind of that in-between breed. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, some of these commercial breed pigs can get really big. Yeah. When I was a kid, my parents had pigs, my dad bred pigs and sold feeders. Right. And, um, our big, I can't remember what his name was, but it was our big boar pig, boar yeah. hog. He was like a thousand pounds. Yeah. I, I mean, believe it. He, it was like, it was like a pony yeah. out there. You know, he was, he was huge. I believe it. Yeah. Sweet, docile. Right. Um, you know, didn't wasn't like wasn't bitey. He he was good. He wasn't right. a great breeder. Yeah, I think maybe because he was so big. Uh-huh. Looking back, yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's a lot of animal to keep contained. That's a lot of animal to <laughs> to keep contained, especially one that excels at rooting. Right, and and you know, it seems like he just gets his jollies by busting through fences. You know, they love it. Yeah. I mean, if if you have a commercial breed pig or a large breed pig on one side of the fence and the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, mm-hmm. you better get ready and be prepared because. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't really matter how, I mean, unless you have your posts concreted into the ground, they will lift a post Mm -hmm. right up out of the ground and it can be down there deep. They will lift it right up out of the ground and they'll lift the whole dang fence panel up Mm -hmm. and they'll just go right under it. Yeah, I, I remember back again to my childhood, we had a farrowing pen, which is something that's been outlawed in our state since then. But the farrowing pen, we had to... Um, we used a chain link that was sunken into the ground and concreted in. Yeah. Yeah. So there was no rooting yeah. underneath it. And then we had a secondary fence that went, you know, from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Crazy to think about, but um, that's what it takes. Yeah. I mean, our gate to our pig pen is also the gate to the loading chute for mm-hmm. said pigs. And so that those posts are concreted into the ground because before we had them concreted into the ground, (laughs) we put a pin, we put a pig into the loading chute and said pig decided she did not want to be in the loading chute. And she stuck her nose right under that gate and she lifted the whole thing right up, pulled the post right out of the ground. So um, you do have to have them concreted in there um, or they will get out. Mm -hmm. Um, Hot. Electric wire. I was going to say hot, hot wire. wire. Yeah. Hot wire. I really think that pigs, I don't know if they can, you know, because if, if you run hot wire, it runs on a pulse. Right. And so every time it pulses, you can hear that little click. Uh-huh. And I think that they... They know if They it's know. Off. They yeah. know if that click is not happening and they know this fence is shorted <sighs> out. It is free game. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't just like move past it no they have to like tear it up and move past it yeah they do yeah at one point my pig pen was ridiculous because it and and we keep a really large pig pen but I like that I mean I like to give my pigs a A lot of area a big space you know some people are on the other side of the fence and say oh no no give them a really small face Mm -hmm. so they don't have to they can't move around as much and Mm -hmm. that way they get bigger faster but Mm -hmm. I'm like no Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not in that camp. Mm-hmm. So big huge pig pen. And so the outside of the pig pen was done with hog panels mm-hmm. which had the little yellow electric fence wire holders attached to it and so we had a strand of hot wire running on the inside of the hog panels mm-hmm. and then on the inside of that I was running your electric hog netting that you the let net. me borrow. Mm-hmm. And so I had like a three yeah. step fence. 
in order to keep these pigs in. And did they ever not get out? Oh my I gosh, mean, <laughs> they got out so much. Still. <laughs> but I mean, at one point, I think I had like, I don't know, 10 or 12 pigs in there. Right. It was that time we decided to do like a ton of pork shares for yeah. people. And you lo- almost lost your mind. I know. It was insane. Yeah. So they're they're very, I mean, just know if you're going with that commercial breed, you know, you definitely have to think about your setup and have a good, good, good setup mm-hmm. because those pigs, yeah. we they're kept, like a bull. If they want to get out, they're going to get out. Right. The last pigs that we kept were Durox, and um, we started them in a smaller contained pen space. Mm-hmm. I think it's like 12 by 12 or something like right. that. It was two little piggies, and as they grew, we let them out into, a. <laughs> they had two of our pasture spaces and um there were enough it, we're on an oak hill there were enough acorns there to keep, to them, keep them busy more than happy yeah but they loved having that space to run yeah you know and they run the whole field back and forth they had a ditch to wallow in that made them happy and we had excellent pork off of off of those one one of them we sold one of them Actually, both of those we sold. We didn't keep any of that pork now that I think about it. Yeah. But before that, we had the same. We had a Duroc and a Berkshire. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Let right. them run. Let them eat the acorns. Let them play in the mud. Be happy right. little pigs. The cows don't love them so much. but um, I bet. <laughs> but, I mean, they, they coexisted just fine. They, they did fine. The one thing that was good about that, they weren't necessarily pasture pig, quote unquote, breeds. Right. But they did fine there, and they would eat... This is gonna be gross again. Y'all aren't gonna like this, but right. this is this is homestead life. It's real life. They eat cow poop, right? And um, they actually get quite a bit of nourishment off of it. Mm-hmm. Well, so. I mean, it's just like the chickens. Mm-hmm. I mean, we utilize our free range chickens yeah. around where the well is yeah. for the cows because the chickens will scratch through the manure yeah. and spread it. And it's fly in the, control. In the meantime, they're mm-hmm. eating larva out of it right. and making it into eggs. This is farm life. <laughs> the circle of life. <laughs> the circle of homestead dinner. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, those pigs, they did great on pasture. And like I said, they weren't necessarily what you'd call pasture pigs right. um, or pasture breeds, but they did fine in that space. And But they're not your commercial Yorkshires, Hampshires that are going to want to root more, want to break out right. the fences more. Right. The grass is always greener on the other side to them. Always. <laughs> I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, those types of pigs, you just typically would not want to pasture them because they're going to tear up your pasture, mm-hmm. which means less grass for the cows and right. the sheep and, right. you know, those animals that really thrive off of that. So. Yeah. They really do. They really do tear up ground. Yeah. Yeah. Like. They're like tilling machines. Yes. Yeah. And so on the flip side, your lard pigs, um, and again, there's kind of two people. There's two different Mm -hmm. camps here. Um, Some people say that lard pigs do not root at all. Mm -hmm. And other people that have kept lard lard pigs say, oh, no, that's not true. They do root. Yeah. But the difference between the two different pigs is the size of their snout. So your commercial or your lard breed, lard breed pigs, or like you look at a wild pig, how right. long their snouts oh, are. Yeah. Well, that's because they root, and mm-hmm. so they really get down in there. But the lard pigs, they typically have that shorter mm-hmm. snout, and so they're not going to root as bad or it's just as not deep. In their nature. It's not as much. Right. Um, but I have heard though, that some of them will root just out of being like a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if there was an older pig in their little group that was a rooter and even though they're a lard pig, they're going to see the other pig rooting and, Mm -hmm. oh, I should be rooting. So it just might not be as bad. So they're easier kept on pasture because they're typically aren't going to tear it up as much. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, I think that all has to do with, okay, well, I mean, if you, I don't care what kind of pig it is. If you leave it in an area long enough, it's going to tear it up. Well, just their feet. There's going to be no grass. Mm -hmm. They're going to tear it up. There's going to be no vegetation in there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you want to avoid that, you really have to move them. Right, right. Rotate. Rotate. Yep. Rotate them. For sure. In the pasture. So what about differences in the cost to feed them? How do they convert? Yeah, so cost to feed... Those large pigs, oh my word. They will go through some feed. They will go through some feed. Yeah. You know, and we soak our pig feed. Mm -hmm. Um, That helps cut down on the cost a little bit. Mm -hmm. They get all the kitchen scraps, anything that comes out of the garden that we're not going to use. 
but they will go through some feed. And even with all those supplements, Mm -hmm. you're spending a lot of money on it. Yeah. Um, But it's a much quicker grow out. Right. And it's still a better product than what you're buying at the store. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Because, I mean, we're feeding, you know, a locally milled grain. Right. um, Along with lots of veggies and whatever else. And not just better, but we've run the numbers several times, no matter what breeds we've raised. And we're still coming out cheaper, even if we pay a butcher, than the grocery store pork. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's cheaper. It's better. Yeah it's going to be better for you. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know that it's not like pumped with fluid to make it look bigger or whatever, you know, you know, you know, the age on the meat, you know, where it's been. And the pig was allowed to be a pig. Right. How pigs should be living. Yeah. And not like in a confined space on concrete. With tails docked and. Right. And and 200 other pigs. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. um, there's the satisfaction in that too. Yeah. You know, as, so the cost as opposed to your heritage breeds or like your Cooney yeah. Coonies, for example. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, the cost to feed for the lard pigs, I think, really is going to depend on what your pasture is like mm-hmm. and where you live. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're in Florida, so yeah. we have year-round pasture. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you want to make sure that it's quality pasture. If it's not really thick quality pasture, you're still going to have to supplement some grain or some corn yeah. um, or something because, um, you know, if they just don't have that lush, lush pasture, they're just not going to be getting enough. So, right, right. Um, you know, in Florida too, um, you know, since we don't have any snow on the ground in winter, the feed costs are going to be a little bit lower mm-hmm. um, compared to somebody up north who is going to have to supplement either bales of hay mm-hmm. or more feed right. um, to get them through the winter. So, right. Um, all things to consider. All things to consider. And again, I think it comes down to pasture rotation. Right. You know, and if you don't have quality pasture, that's one way that you can improve your pasture mm-hmm. by really committing to a rotation schedule. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have seen it. Mm -hmm. We've done it out here. I mean, it really does make a difference if you rotate your animals. I can't remember. It's supposed I think it's, I think it's supposed to be cows, then chickens, then pigs or cows, pigs, then chickens. I can't remember, but there, there's an order that works best. Chickens go right after cows, I believe. Okay. So cows, chickens, then pigs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, or if you don't have all of those animals to rotate, even if you're not following that type of rotation, even if you're just rotating your individual species of animals, just pigs, it's still going to improve your pasture. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you want to keep the feed bill down, that's definitely something to keep in mind to implement. Mm -hmm. And we've talked, and I don't know, maybe you just touched on this. I don't remember, but we've talked in the past about soaking grains and fermenting grains and all of that and how you can, I mean, you can really cut down like by 30%, I think it is. 30%. Yeah. Yeah, On, on how much volume you're feeding to them by fermenting Mm -hmm. what you do give them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 25 to 30% easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I will fill up like right now I have a bunch of meat chickens (laughs) and I'm soaking their feed, um, in a pretty decent size barrel. It's not a 55 gallon barrel, might be 35. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a step smaller than my big ones. So I fill that halfway up with feed Mm -hmm. and then I top that off with a quarter of water. Mm -hmm. And then when I come out the next morning, that feed is like busting the the top top. of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, (laughs) I mean, it swells. It's a lot more feed. Well, and it's, it sounds like you're feeding them. I mean, you are feeding them less, but they're not getting less because by doing that, you're unlocking the nutrients in the feed. And so it's just more available. It's more available for them to digest, to absorb. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I add um, either, I used to do apple cider vinegar and I will still sometimes do apple cider vinegar to that. But um, I usually use kombucha vinegar anymore Nice, because I'm making it (laughs) for free. Right. (laughs) So that's what I have. I've been putting um, a quarter cup of fire cider in my chicken's water for the last several weeks. Nice. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. Keep them nice and healthy. All so that some probiotics. And yeah. Probiotics mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. vinegar and yeah. keep everybody healthy. Mm-hmm. It, it helps to bring down the feed bill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does. You know, so all these little things I really feel like add up if you implement them all. So. Yeah. Yep. Temperament. Mm-hmm. Ooh. 
Yeah. So like I mentioned those Durox and how good that meat is and how great they pastured and blah, 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 blah. But they are bitey. Are they? Yes. Ooh. They are bitey little creatures. <laughs> they, I don't, they're just mouthy. Like it's not necessarily that they're being ugly all the time. They will, but it's more, um, like that's how they're sensing everything is, right. ex, you know, they're exploring right. with their mouth. Yeah. So kind yeah, like no. puppies. I, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like puppies. <laughs> Yeah, I had a I had a pig um, bite me once, but it was not because it was exploring with its mouth. It was because it was mad at me, and mm-hmm. it was coming at me because I was trying to mess with her piglets. We were trying to catch piglets because we had to castrate the males, mm-hmm. and that mama pig pig got mad, and yeah. she was big. And I mean, they will charge at you, and that is some scary stuff when you got a big old pig coming at you. They don't want to hear them babies squealing. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> no. So. Yeah. Um, jeans were a good thing that day. Yeah. So, um, was what kind of pig was that? That was one of my, um, what the heck are they called? It was the big white pink pig. Oh, your Yorks. Yeah. Your York's yeah. yeah. There you okay. go. Um, I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was one of those big white pink pigs mm-hmm. and she got butchered. <laughs> Good. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Yeah. She was mean. Mm-hmm. She got butchered. I'm yeah. not keeping you around if you're going to charge at me and bite people and you're going. Right. Right. But she made good bacon. That's good. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the temperament's definitely different. And that's not to say that every big pig is going to be mean, you know, and, and really any mother pig can be ugly when right. it comes to piglets. Right. So, you know, that, you know, could have just been a piglet situation, but, you know, not all big pigs are going to be mean. I mean, Big mm-hmm. Mama was one of the sweetest pigs that we've had. I mm-hmm. mean, you could do anything with her piglets and she was totally fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so just because they're big doesn't mean they're going to be mean. Um, but I definitely think that more larger breed pigs kind of lean that way. A little more aggressive. Versus your yeah. smaller lard pigs. Right. They're just a little more low-key, a little more chill. Yeah. Um, a lot of homesteaders like to raise them because they know their kids are going to be around right. them. You know, they're just a little bit safer. You know, it's not a four, 500-pound right. animal that you're working around. And I think, too, that goes into why they're easier to keep in the fence. Yeah. You know, it's not because they're stupid and, and they don't know how to break through the fence. They're just chill. Right. Yeah. They're smaller. They they don't have that muscle strength that that big, big pig has. <laughs> there is that for sure. <laughs> for sure. So, um, yeah. I mean, a lot of people say that the smaller lard pigs do have a much better temperament, mm-hmm. a lot easier to handle, mm-hmm. um, easier on the fences, easier on the pastures. Easier on the feed bill. Right. And easier to butcher. Easier to butcher. Right. Which we talked about. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, it's a lot easier to hang a smaller pig than it is a bigger pig. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Us chicks did it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's crazy when I look back on that. We're like, look, we had a girl's day and we butchered pigs. Most girls go get their nails done. (laughs) And I'm like, there's germs at the nail salon. Right. Let's go butcher a pig. (laughs) Hey, you want to come help me? Yeah. Bring your sharp knives. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Our husbands were like, y'all are doing what? Uh-huh. And we're like, well, yeah. I well, mean, yeah. these these pigs have to go. Yeah. They had to go. They had to go. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you just got to put on your big girl panties and put get on it, your boots. Get and the job done. Get it done. We did. We even had um, Emily's girls there. Do you remember? Yep. Yeah, so we had two little girls there, you know, interrupting, <laughs> asking the questions. They didn't slow us down at all. It was great. They yeah, were no. they were all about it. They were great. I think the only time we stopped was um, to give a little science lesson. Yeah, <laughs> for them. So it was good. <laughs> Homeschool at its finest. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that goes. I mean, that kind of ties in with your finish weights. Your finish yeah. weights are going to be different. Mm-hmm. Um, you a know. lot less meat, like you said, too. A lot less meat. So you know, if you have twelve kids, you know, you might want to go with that bigger pig. Mm-hmm. You know, and send one pig to the butcher and mm-hmm. get all that meat in one shot, um, versus doing a smaller lard pig. You know. Yeah, and keep the lard pig for your lard. 
for your lard. If you yeah. want to do that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's so worth it. Having homegrown lard is so worth it. I mean, you can use it with everything. It is so worth it. I, I've, I've seen where people are, you know, melting it and using it in a salad dressing even. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't understand how that works because I would think, because it solidifies when it gets right. cold. But but they they are. Yeah. Um, I just took some of my beef tallow that I had rendered down mm-hmm. and um, I melted like a half a jar of it and combined it with olive oil mm-hmm. and then hit it with the immersion blender mm-hmm. and then let it reharden and it's like a moisturizer now. Nice. It's like creamy. Nice. It's really nice. That's cool. That's what I put on my deer hide that I didn't finish properly to help <laughs> it soften back up. <laughs> we should do an episode on that. On, yeah, that would tanning. be fun. That would be good. That would be fun. I'll have to revisit I that. I can talk tanning. Yeah. Yeah. I can ask the questions because <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. Using, using that lard in so many ways. I've used our lard in, um, you know, not just cooking, but like anywhere you would use butter in your baking. Yeah. Um, a lard pie crust. Oh, you cannot be yeah. a lard pie crust. And I'm not talking your grocery store hydrogenized shelf no. stable lard from there. Like no. it's pretty and it's white. It is not the same. No. Um, uh, making soap. Soap. Mm -hmm. Homemade soap is the best. And making good soap that way. Yeah. And Um, then, yeah, Shanna Alverson. mm -hmm. Shanna Alverson. Yep, Food Over Pharma. (laughs) Food Over Pharma, who we saw speak at Scrub Fest, um, mentioned that the absolute best, healthiest thing to cook with is lard. lard. It's a low smoke point. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can fry in it. So, I mean, it doesn't do anything seem it. right, but it's right. It's good. It's good. It doesn't seem right because we've been indoctrinated over the yes. last, what, 50, 60 years that yes. fat is bad. Yeah. I mean, in our childhood, everything needed to be low fat. Unsaturated. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, guess what? L- lard is a good, natural, polyunsaturated yes. fat. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's good. So yeah, I guess the last difference between the commercial pigs and the lard pigs are going to be time to grow out. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of these lard pigs are going to take, you know, a year and a half. Longer even. Longer even, two years. Yeah. Um, So it's definitely going to be something that you're going to have around the farm for a little while Mm -hmm. um, versus your larger breed pigs. Your commercial pigs. I know some people say that, oh, they can be done in six months. I've never grown out a pig that quick. I have. I usually keep mine between eight months and a year. Ours, we've done six months. Last, have you? Yeah, yeah. The last last pigs we did were six months. Were they? hmm Yeah. In fact, because um, we got them in October, mm-hmm. and they were eight weeks old. November, December, January, February, March. No, oh, five so months. Five months, yeah. And what were their finish weights? Do you know? Um, almost 300. Almost 300. Yeah, I want to say like 275, okay. something like that. Live weight, though. Live weight. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so that's good. Mm-hmm. Should we talk for briefly about um, cut, like, percentages and what you get? I mean, I guess it's hard to know with your lard pigs, but, like, on a commercial breed, when you raise that pig, if you have a 300-pound pig, how much meat are you going to walk away with? Yeah, I mean, well, typically from your live weight, you're going to lose uh, roughly 38 to 40% mm-hmm. on your live weight. from, mm-hmm. And that's what you're going to get back cut and wrap. Right. You're going to get back 60% right. of the live weight cut and wrap. Yeah, I always say 60-ish. Yeah. Yeah, and it depends. Your, your lard pigs are going to be different. Lard pigs are going to be different, yeah. A lot less meat again and a lot more fat. Mm-hmm. So... A lot more fat to render. Still good. <laughs> this makes me want some fat pigs. I know. I have like totally <laughs> talked myself into, oh, yes, I need pastured pigs. I agree. And so I don't know. I mean, I might like try to shop around and maybe see if I can pick up a couple little piglets and, yeah. you know, that are the smaller pasture breed and, yeah. you know, maybe see. See, see, see what happens. Mm-hmm. Move them around the farm a little bit. I mean, I got plenty of pasture, so. Yep. And cool. plenty of electric fence. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what they need. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, we just thought it would be a good thing to touch on because there's so many different breeds of pigs, mm-hmm. and there's definitely some differences between the two. So, um, recently, we did put up a post on our blog that talks about Cooney Cooney pigs, mm-hmm. 
And I have to say, they're really kind of cute, but they in are. an ugly way. Right. They're like, they got that ugly cute thing going on. Yeah. Um, so if y'all want to learn more about the Cooney Cooney's specifically, um, you can find that on our blog. Yep. AmericanFarmsteaders.com. Yep. All right, guys. Until next week. All right. Sounds good, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.